My name is Eddie Zhang. I'm the co-director for the Asian Prisoner Support Committee that's based in Oakland, California. And we specifically uh, help support individuals that who are incarcerated and when they return into society. My experience with the criminal justice system started when I was arrested uh, for minor crimes as a juvenile delinquent. And later on, when I was at the age of 16, I committed a crime of kidnapped to commit robbery. And I was charged as an adult and sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. And that journey took uh, 19 years uh, inside the state prison. And after that, I was detained by the Department of Homeland Security for deportation because I'm not a citizen of the United States. The criminal justice system is not really designed to um, hold young people, especially young people who are under 18, uh, to re rehabilitate them. Because punishment is the, the key point for the criminal justice system. Um, so I don't believe that it is really helpful in deter crime or uh, help create public safety. Because when the system is focused on punishment, then there is no room for restorative justice, and no room for uh, opportunity to heal. Fast forwarding when I was incarcerated, I ended up spending 11 months in solitary confinement because by that time I was educated, I was socially and politically conscious, and I, because I was advocating for ethnic studies and Asian American literatures being taught in the college program in San Quentin State Prison, I was being punished again. Uh, but this time for exercising my knowledge and exercising my voice, you know, to demand more um, culturally competent uh, literature and courses to, uh, for, for the population where we can really understand our culture and history to, uh, so we can find more commonality than differences, right, and to promote racial harmony. So that's, that's why this, the system itself is, is not conducive uh, in really helping the individual that who are impacted uh, by the criminal justice system, right. It also does not allow people opportunity to really um, reclaim the, the trauma, right. So we hear the terms hurt people, hurt people, and heal people, heal people. And that's, that's a reality, right? When, when in my situation, when I was able to really uh, come to terms with myself in engaging in the education process, I was able to have the confidence and self-esteem that I didn't have when I uh, committed a crime. And then it's through that process I was able to cultivate empathy, I was able to cultivate uh, the understanding of taking responsibility for my action, right? Because when I committed my crime, I sentenced my victims to a life of suffering. And at the same time, I also sentenced my family and myself in a lifetime of suffering in that sense, right? So, but because I was able to uh, focus on um, engaging in higher education and with the support from my family and the people from the community who I uh, were able to really build a, a relationship with, they're the ones that who continue to motivate me and support me to be able to do better. And as I mature um, from a teenager all the way to an adult, then I was able to really understand that I have a bigger purpose as a human being, you know, on this earth, humankind. Um, so that's where I find uh, my value, that's where I find uh, my mission in life, which is to service the youth and the community and prevent other young people uh, to go, go down on the, that migration of the school to prison and deportation pipeline as I did. Right? Um, I mentioned earlier that you know, I spent 19 years incarcerated and finally I was released. I ended up having to spend two more years fighting against my deportation inside of a federal custody. And so, but in that process, you know, I lost my case, right, even though I had tremendous support. So I was ordered deported, but because I, uh, the Department of Homeland Security couldn't get a travel document for me to be deported, so I was released under supervision, and it's through that process I continued to, to fight in the courts, right. So um, my case was won at the Ninth Circuit Court, and they set president 
And then subsequently, because of the work that I've committed to do, you know, in the community, I received an unconditional pardon from the governor of California. And then the Department of Homeland Security terminated my deportation order. And I went back to the Superior Court with my county of commitment uh, to, for a post-conviction relief, which allowed the court to vacate all my deport, deportable charges. Then I was able to apply for citizenship and I became a citizen. Uh, but this process, you know, is, is something that uh, we all have to go through as someone that, who's not a citizen of the United States, where people are just thinking that, well, if you commit your crime, then we send you to be punished, so hopefully you can gain insight and come out to be a better person. But on the other end, is they're not providing, the system and the mainstream community are not providing the culturally competent program for um, someone that who is from the Asian American Pacific Islander community. And that, that's, that's something that is lacking in, in, in that sense, right? For, uh, the lack of the understanding and lack of the, the, lack of the need for that population. So therefore, um, we are not, when, when we are throwing the system as young people, we don't have that uh, control. But we know what work is, you know, people can uh, provide a support, necessary support system for the young people inside, and then to be able to uh, help them to find, find the, their path, and to be able to cultivate the love, the em empathy that they are capable of having and to be able to make a difference in their lives and then pay it forward. The juvenile justice system and the criminal justice system uh, should mix because if you send a young person into an adult system, you're creating uh, more trauma in the young person's life. And in incidents where I have experienced the young people uh, committed suicide because the idea of them going to adult prison or serving a long a sentence without the possibility of parole, it just uh, shuts down all hopes for them. And then also seeing young people uh, in adult prisons, when I mention, when I say young people, a lot of people that I is, was in my situation who are juvenile lifers, that who was char charged as an adult and sentenced to life in prison. Um, many of the young individuals are being really preyed upon in, in many ways because of the age and because of the lack of maturity and the being very impressionable. And when you go into an adult system where uh, violence is the norm and the institution of isolation or oppression is the daily existence, then for the young person it's very difficult to be able to um, not get reach, continue to be traumatized and at the same time not getting the therapeutic support that they need to heal. But in that sense, we are actually creating more um, violence. We create more uh, public safety issues for, for, the, for the young people when they do get released because not everyone uh, who was sentenced to adult prison or who was sentenced as an adult and going to adult prison are all lifetime prisoners. Many of them, they do get out and when we don't when we start mixing young people into the adult system, that's when we really um, sentence to, in, in a sense, uh, give them a death sentence in many ways. So that's why uh, we, we have to shut that down. Slavery to continue to exist, and the system is set in place to profit off of people's incarceration. So therefore, uh, race has every part to do with the system, how it is set up, because the majority of people that were incarcerated or impacted by uh, the prison industry complex, um, they are people of color. And if we, if we can understand that and look at how the systemic racism plays a part into this prison industry complex with, with privatized prison, uh, when human bodies are, are used as uh, labor, as free labor, right? It's no different than the slave plantations and the cotton fields, you know, when the slavery uh, was openly accepted. So therefore, race, uh, ethnics, ethnicities have, has everything to do with the criminal justice system. But therefore, we must, you know, start thinking about 
different ways. You know, when we're talking about how do we um, engage the people that who make poor choices, that who committed crimes, and sometimes violent crimes, how do we understand that they are human beings? How do we understand that just because they committed crimes, they don't have the ability to change and they don't have the ability to, uh, for transformation and redemption? People say that about me when I uh, first entered the system, that, wow, look at this person. He shouldn't be out in, a, in society. He shouldn't even return to society until well into his uh, you know, middle age or when he's older, right, in a sense because people counted me out. They say that I'm incorrigible, but yet here I am, right? As, as someone that who is capable of change, that who demonstrated with the necessary support and uh, necessary culturally competent uh, programs that I am able to excel. You know, I am able to take responsibility for my action. And one of the, uh, the opportunity that I was able to, to get was to be able to apologize to my victims for the, for the harms that I have committed to them, right? And that's an that's a ideal situation is where the, the, the victims can understand um, that, that my transformation is, help, is helping to create more public safety and uh, prevent other people from uh, being victimized to prevent other victims, right? So, but it's not easy. So therefore, there has to be uh, systems in place where we have to validate, validate the victim's suffering, and we have to also validate the people that who committed those crimes and who make those type of poor choices. The people also been traumatized in different ways in their life is where we start thinking about restorative justice and transformative justice. In, in its place, we have to create um, you know, this mechanism that our mentality of dealing with people that who have committed crimes, you know, especially the, the young people that have committed crimes, we have to be able to develop this mechanism to be able to provide a support and healing in uh, changing the mindset of these young people to cultivate the, the humanity, the love, and the compassion that exists within them, right? Because if we don't think about the possibility of those type of uh, alternatives and mechanisms, then there is no hope. Then we will continue to produce more uh, victims, we'll continue to produce more public safety issues. And therefore, I, st I still believe that in order for in order for us to shift that mindset, we really, we really have to do um, a lot of soul searching. And I always say that we must engage, we must be willing to engage on a personal revolution before we can embark on a collective revolution. Because sometimes to find yourself, to be able to know yourself, to be honest with yourself, it, it, it takes a, a lot of courage, you know, and sometimes that, that self-reflection and self-revolution is very uh, violent in, in that way, right, because you have to come to terms with yourself. And I always focus on uh, qi as a, a method in reaching the restorative justice, and the qi that I'm talking about is culture, history, and identity. Because once I was able to learn about my culture and my history, and then I was able to identify my place on, on this earth of humankind. And then I do the same in learning about other people's culture and history and their identity. Then I feel the human connection. I feel that, you know, we, we are in this together. Well, we are part of this society. And in that sense, you know, restorative justice and transformative justice are the keys for us to have a different uh, way in dealing with uh, juvenile justice. So we must invest in the young people's education. That's where the prevention comes in, right? And, and no, no taking um, juvenile justice 
as a, a priority or a, a fix-all solution.